You're listening to the Forrester Technopolitics Podcast, inspiring commentary and intelligent insight from experts in the thick of it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Forrester Technopolitics. I'm here with senior analyst TJ Kitt. Hi, TJ. Hi, how are you? Very well. Uh, we're here to talk about online collaboration uh, productivity software. Right. Uh, and specifically, Microsoft Office 365 and Google Apps. Mm-hmm. First of all, what are these collaboration tools? I mean, what are the components? I mean, sure. I know there's email, <laughs> but is that all it is? Well, email is the is the big thing. So email is typically the draw that we see our clients coming to us with. It's There's some kind of change that they're undergoing in terms of their email platform, and so they're looking at these two offerings. Uh, if we look at Microsoft Office 365 first, basically what it's comprised of are four main components. Exchange Online, which would be the email part of it. Mm-hmm. SharePoint Online, which is an online instantiation of the SharePoint product. So it's all SharePoint, but it's just online. It's just online. Yep. Then you have Link Online, which is their, what Microsoft would term to be their UC suite, uh, or their UC, UC? Techno- Unified Communications. Unified Communication. Technology, okay. yes. Yeah. Um, which would be your instant messaging, your presence, as well as some point-to-point audio, point-to-point video, and through partners, the ability to begin to replace your PBX and do call-out to, to phone s- services. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, the last component would be their productivity suite, so your word processor, your uh, spreadsheet, your presentation technology, and that is Office Professional Plus. Um, that comes in two parts. So there's an on-premises component that is that is guaranteed to users that have certain licensing tiers. And mm-hmm. That's another complexity that we can talk about in a moment. Yeah. Um, so that's the typical what you would expect. Here is a, a, a icon on my desktop. I click that and that's you know Word or that's Excel or that's PowerPoint. Uh, and then there is a browser-based component of it. So there is the ability to use Word and Exchange, and excuse me, Word and Excel and um, PowerPoint in your browser, and that's called web apps. All right. So I'm a little confused, though, about – so I think of online. I think mm-hmm. of it that it's browser-based. Yes. But it's not exactly browser-based. No, 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 no. That, that component of it isn't necessarily okay. um, because there are going to be parity differences – um, between or feature parity differences between what you can do in a browser necessarily and what you can do, say, it locally. Right. Um, you can't run ma- macros, for example, in a browser. So there's there's a step down in capability. Microsoft makes that up by giving you the ability to do a little bit more mm-hmm. on premises by having your typical copy of um, Office and but then having the web version. So that's that allows for more expanded access. Right. So, but. Say the email part of Office 365 is is web. Yeah, part of it is again. So there's Same. So, okay. So if you have a traditional organization, this gets to kind of yeah. why companies go one way or another. But if you have an organization that is predicated on a lot of things that you might have built out in Outlook, um, Outlook is just a client. It receives email from wherever you yeah. point it at, whatever server you point it at, and so that server can be on premises or that server can be in the cloud. So mail delivered from Exchange Online can be delivered into your Outlook client, or it can be accessed through Outlook Web Access, which okay. is kind of the online. It's sort of a hybrid, it. would you say? Is that it, fair? It, it's, it's fair insofar as it takes advantage of some yeah. local technology on someone's PC. Right. Um, you could say the same thing about anything that delivers, say, mail mm-hmm. locally. So if I receive email on my mobile device, for example, that's email being pushed into whatever the local email client mm-hmm. is. So there's that element of it. But the service itself is still delivered mm-hmm. from the cloud. And so that's really where the, where the difference is made up. Mm-hmm. It's that on the back end, there is a service that we no longer have to manage on premises. And so that's what Microsoft is offering with Office 365. And what about Microsoft's key rival, Google? Google, yes. And Google Apps. <laughs> Google Apps. What, is, what are those components? So so we look at just kind of maybe what our audience is, is kind of focused on, which is Google Apps for Business, keeping in mind that there are also other flavors of this, Google Apps for Education and Google Apps for Government. And are those like the, the formal names that they those go are the by? Google names. Apps for Business. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, Google Apps for Business. Business uh, it contains, let's say, four key components as well. Mm-hmm. Gmail, which is, you know, as the name suggests, the email component of it. But within the email, the email client that's delivered via the web, there's also an instant messaging capability, a video conferencing capability, and a VoIP capability. Mm-hmm. So that's all kind of contained within Gmail. You also have the calendaring function, which is, as the name suggests, your ability to schedule appointments and share those out with other individuals. You have Drive which used to be known as Google Docs, 
but this is their productivity suite and kind of what's changed over time as it's evolved is that this has become a file syncing and sharing service as right. well. Yeah. So you now have the ability to sync content down. So it's to Google's device. Dropbox. It's Google's Dropbox to yeah. an extent. Yeah, um, but integrated. But integrated. Yeah. Yes. Um, so the, the the reader on the on the front end is a Google product that would be yeah. Google Docs, and that would be Google, you know, kind of the writer in the presentation pro- platform, and so on. And then you have Google Sites, which is their how they would describe it as a, a kind of a simple web building tool. Um, how companies have begun to use it. Um, is as a way of creating teaming apply- mm-hmm. or that kind of team workspace. So would that be akin to Microsoft SharePoint, and uh, kind of just, and, the, and, the, and the broad outlines. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, as a developer, you know that SharePoint is a is middleware more or less. Right. It's right. A, it's, it's a very complicated piece of technology yeah. um, that doesn't really have an analog mm-hmm. a- elsewhere unless you start looking at the Lotus capabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, Sites, more or less, is, is kind of how we want to kind of organize information and to share with other individuals. And so, uh, you know, from that level, where there would be a parallel would be, say, in some of the simple team sites that you can build in SharePoint Online and some of the teaming stuff that you can do in Google Sites. But different technologies that serve different purposes, though when businesses make the transition to Google Apps, they do look at it as a way of mirroring some of that functionality and now, you didn't mention, um, like, Google – well, you mentioned Docs in the context of Drive, but, mm-hmm. but they also have a word processor yeah. and a presentation and a right. spreadsheet. Right, and, and that's, that's all – That's all part of that's that. That's all part of Drive. So they would – so we're, Microsoft would call all of that Office. Right. Google calls it Drive. Right. Now, so are these – to what extent are these comparable? Are these apples to apples comparisons? And, and what are the reasons why firms would choose each? So they're not quite apple to apple. Um, you know, uh, in the broad outlines, they are both what I would term to be online collaboration and productivity suites. And mm-hmm. so far as they offer at the you know, kind of outlines, the four key components of what we would call, you know, kind of collaboration technology, email, teaming capabilities, real-time communications capabilities, and social capabilities. But once you get inside of each one of these applications, you realize that there are some differences. Uh, you know, so we just talked about some of them in so far as Microsoft has a, a kind of a, still a heavy local footprint. Print. They still have local clients. They still do deliver technology on premises for clients, and mm-hmm. they and they have a stepping stone to the cloud that they call kind of their hybrid delivery model, in which you can keep some things on premises and mm-hmm. move some workloads into the cloud. Um, also, how they're packaged is different. So Microsoft, you know, being Microsoft has a, a complicated set of, of pricing tiers, um, beginning, you know, kind of in the small business world, but then as you get into the enterprise arena, going from, you know, kind of their E1 packaging all the way up to their E4 packaging. Google has a kind of a, a more flat structure. Uh, it's just, you know, what you get you get at fifty dollars a user a year. Fifty dollars a user, no matter who you are. No matter who you are, you you really can't disaggregate their pla- their 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 service. Um, yeah. There's no just I want Gmail. You get Gmail. You get it with sites and so on. You can turn sites on or off. You can turn Google Drive on or off. But it's part of what you get when you go in for that service. Um, kind of what's actually kind of delivered is is a little bit different as well. Insofar as you know, the functionality is different. So, because Google Drive is browser-based, mm-hmm. um, you know what it can do compared to, say, what you can do in the Microsoft Office suite mm-hmm. is a little bit different. Um, well, you know, I can think of one thing: PowerPoint. PowerPoint is different. Yes. I've tried to, you know, as analysts, we do presentations mm-hmm. a lot, and uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. I mean, Google Presentation, I think, is what they call it. Yeah. I, I just can't. Yeah, and deal with those capabilities. They don't have enough capabilities, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's and that's kind of the thing. It's um, you know, what they're looking at and what they're saying is that here is a one hundred percent solution in what Microsoft has offered. So they spent years, you know, over twenty years building right. out this capability that's right. going to fit the need of everyone. And a lot of businesses have standardized on that. So, you know, Forrester has built templates that are well designed for Microsoft's presentation technology. Right. Google is building a solution that you might say is 90% or, or good enough for 90% of the people, people who are just going to read documents, who are going to make very simple um, documents, who might want to share content. And so yeah. where you see the difference, and even in organizations that have gone to, to, to Google Apps, is that they're not necessarily throwing away 
the office suite because there's still going to be things that you need to do inside of it. Mm, interesting. But where traction happens, where where people begin to start using this technology, is in areas where the functionality is different. So the collaborative editing of documents, for example, becomes an area that is very interesting to knowledge workers. And and that's where you see some of the the initial adoption as people begin to work together on content that doesn't have to be managed heavily, doesn't require a lot of workflow, doesn't have to be saved back into some type of enterprise content management system. So who's winning here? Uh, Do you think (laughs) Google Google Docs is, is, is really making some inroads into Office? Microsoft yeah. Office. I, um, I, I guess it, it, oh, the endless hedge. It depends. <laughs> um, yeah. um, Google. I, I think you know Google and Microsoft. I think are, are having a, a fair battle. I think um, it, you know it's it's probably too early to declare a winner. Google is making strides. So mm-hmm. with their government product, for example, Google Apps mm-hmm. for Government, you know they have netted some interesting clients, like, like, the, who? like the General Services Administration (GSA) mm-hmm. or NOAA, which is the National Oceanographic and Aeronautics Administration, I believe. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, and what about Office 360? Do they have uh, Office 365? Um, 365. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of circles yes. instead of years. Yeah. You know, and, you know, when they first announced it, I did the same thing. I was thinking, oh, it makes sense. It's yeah. holistic, yeah, but yeah. no, it's 365. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, 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 but but you know, kind of Microsoft has you know similar momentum. You know, so twenty four hour fitness, which you know is a, is a very large um, health center, or I guess kind of health and fitness center chain across the United States, is a is a client of note. Bang and Olufsen is a client of note. Um, they just announced that they that they signed a contract with the city of Chicago as a major client. So I mean, you know, they they both you know, can point to major wins at in government arena in large businesses, and then down into the mid market, which mm-hmm. is where the the competition really began. So mm-hmm. Microsoft announces Office 365 in the summer of 2011, and you know what they talk about a lot at that point in time is how they're catering to small businesses because mm-hmm. that's where Google had a lot of traction. The two offerings have grown over that period of time. Google goes out and acquires, you know, BBVA, which is a large Spanish bank that has branches in Latin America, mm-hmm. and you know that's that's you know in the neighborhood of 120,000 seats that we're talking about yeah, there, yeah. and that that becomes a big win for them. And, and Microsoft has similar big wins, you know, clients that we've talked to off the record because they don't want to be public, right. you know, in that range. So you know they're battling it out on on both ends, and the companies, and the, I guess kind of the delineation between companies that go to Office 365 and those that go with Google is basically they're kind of you know, a few things, you know, number one, their feelings about Microsoft's ability to deliver an online solution. Mm -hmm. You know, some believe that because Google started off in the cloud, that they have more of a birthright to deliver services from the cloud. And they understand better than Microsoft what the inherent benefits are of delivering services from the cloud. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, you can have that debate. Uh, Microsoft has, you know, put a lot of money and energy behind, you know, bringing their on-premises technology in alignment with what they're delivering from the cloud and invested a lot in capabilities to allow for other businesses, other vendors to begin developing on top of their platform, such as SharePoint. Uh, and so how that 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 nets out over time is is to be determined. But that's you know kind of just one area that, that companies look at. Another yeah. that we hear a lot from Google customers is that they were interested in trying to find new ways of working. Mm-hmm. They believe that because Google as a technology looks and feels so different than what people have been doing historically. You know, so you know you've used Gmail in comparison to Outlook. You right. know that the organizational structure, for example, is a little bit different. Uh, it's it's search predicated as opposed to you know being able to build folders. Right, right. Um, the same thing applies with the the drive capabilities. That it's a lot more geared toward collaborative editing and creation of documents. Mm-hmm. So businesses see that and they say, well, this will be a good way for us to kickstart more collaborative business processes, to rejigger workflows for employees, to make mm-hmm. our business more nimble and agile for the 21st century. Businesses that go to Office 365 have similar motivations. So they they also want to enable new ways of working. But that's usually around the concepts of like mobility. So we want to be able to deliver this to anybody anywhere. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to necessarily move away from some of the historic you know, kind of understanding of how these technologies should work. So, you know, the, the look and feel of Outlook, the look and feel of the Office Productivity Suite, the look and feel of SharePoint, and so on. And mm-hmm. so they, they gravitate towards that offering. Right. 
And then you know, kind of the third thing is just you know, the flexibility in terms of how the offering is packaged and delivered. So Google is a software as a service exclusively uh, delivered technology. Mm-hmm. Microsoft has taken the opinion or taken the approach that we want to move people to the cloud, but we want to move people to the cloud in their own terms. Right. So we are going to provide for them options. You know, I mentioned a little earlier this concept of hybrid, mm-hmm. uh, which you know really comes out of this idea that there are going to be some workloads that you want to move to the cloud, some that you want to keep on premises, and we're going to make it easier for you to to bridge those two worlds by allowing you to say keeping some of your SharePoint stuff on premises so the stuff that you've done a lot of development on you know if you have a lot of custom applications that you've built on top of sharepoint keep those on premises but move some of the commoditized workloads into the cloud and that's just as an example another thing that they've done is to go is to go towards this idea of having dedicated resources for individual for, for companies so you can indeed as as one of the, one of their shades of offerings mm-hmm. is you kind of have a dedicated instance of Exchange, have a dedicated instance of SharePoint, have a dedicated instance of Link in the cloud. You in mean. the cloud, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, kind of that more traditional hosting model that that we've seen before with some of Microsoft's partners, they've moved that into their Office 365 offering to allow for again that flexibility for a client. And then of course you've got the the multi tenant offering that they've put into the marketplace mm-hmm. around you know kind of Exchange Online right. and Link Online and so on. So that flexibility is what some of, the, of our of our clients are looking at because they think that they, they they kind of need that ability to either split their workload or have dedicated infrastructure in addition to perhaps you know at some point in time moving into a multi tenant environment. It seems like this Microsoft Google battle is going to be raging for many years. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. seem like you know it's going to be back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it. I don't think there'll be a clear winner because I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, it's really just going to be a matter of what you as an organization think you can tolerate. Mm-hmm. And you're t- and you talk to uh, clients all the time about this decision. That, yes. That they make. Yes. And it's. I mean, again, it's. It's. You know, what we counsel is. You know, kind of understand your organization, understand your needs. Uh, you know, a colleague of our, ours, Chris Voci, kind of the way he talks about it is, you know, pick your platform first. And, and what he means by that is pick the vendor based on what you think you need and what the vendor's capabilities are of delivering upon that need. Yeah. You know, how well do you trust their vision? How well do you trust their roadmap? And how does that align with your overall collaborative vision? And then from there, pick your deployment methods, mm-hmm. pick your application you know, integration path and so on. TJ Kitt, thanks for joining Technopolitics. Thank you for having me. Thanks. You've been listening to the Forrester Technopolitics podcast. Read more about the technology fuel disruption and join the discussion at blogs.forrester.com.